Good evening. My name is Janice Mathis. It's my privilege to be the Executive Director of the National Council of Negro Women. We welcome you to the Women's Empowerment Webinar Series. Tonight, our subject is how to increase sales and regain control of your brand's revenue. And we have an outstanding presenter this evening. She's been with us before, and she's back again because she is consistently highly rated by you, our audience. Lori Mann is, in a word, a trailblazer. Her mission is to help trailblazing entrepreneurs grow and scale their businesses using their innate, brilliant, unique gifts and skills to make a bigger impact. And the thing I like about trailblazers, they don't just light the path for themselves, they light it for those who are coming along with them. And Lori has had much success across her career in helping to guide other women to build thriving, prosperous, business enterprises. And that's exactly what our aim is here tonight. We'll have a few other announcements later, but at this point, I wanna ask Mr. Johannes, Communications Director for the National Council of Negro Women, to give us some tips on how to make the most of this GoToWebinar experience. Good evening. If you are on your computer, you have a menu on the right side where you can go down to the bottom and see handouts of the pre tonight's presentation as well as how uh, GoToWebinar works. If you have a question, there's a section that you can type your question in and we will answer it during the uh, latter part of the program. And if possible, if you need to raise your hand, it's also a button on the top left side. On your laptop or, I mean, on your uh, iPads or surfaces, that same menu exists on the top right corner or the lower bottom left corner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johannes. And now we're ready to get started with our presentation. Please join me in welcoming Lori A. Manns. Good evening, Lori. Good evening, Ms. Mathis. Thank you so much for having me this evening. I'm excited to share with everyone a little bit about how to increase sales and regain control of your brand's revenue. So are we ready to get started? Let's go. So the state of the land today is that we are experiencing a pandemic. And Johannes, I am trying to switch the, um, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is ask everyone to just take a deep breath Clear your mind and try not to multitask. I want you to be fully present for one moment so you can think about what it would mean for you to elevate your brand in a bigger way and increase sales. So my question is, how would your life change? And what would that mean to you? If you could elevate your brand and increase sales simultaneously. So, as I was mentioning, the lay of the land right now is that we're in the middle of a global pandemic, which has increased the need for entrepreneurs and small business owners to sell their products and services online. However, many people are stuck and unable to pivot in this new digital environment due to failure to plan. So tonight we're gonna to discuss how you can increase your sales by utilizing various digital strategies to regain control of your brand's revenue and increase visibility at the same time. Because in order to grow your brand, it's all about getting found, seen, and heard by the right people. So what does this mean? It's no longer business as usual. You can't afford not to be online. Increasing sales consistently requires digital assets. And building your online brand is no longer an option. So I wanna check in quickly and just make sure that everyone here understands what we're gonna talk about. So this webinar is perfect for you if you're ready to increase your revenue and income, you need to increase your online presence, you're launching or building a brand, and you're unsure about how to define your brand. And next, 
If you're making branding mistakes, but you're not sure how to fix them, this webinar is perfect for you. And if you don't know how to market or monetize, meaning make money from your brand, this webinar is perfect for you. And also, if you don't know how to define your brand message, or you want to learn how to attract your ideal clients, if any of those apply to you, this webinar is perfect for you. So a little bit about me. I left a 19 year career in the radio industry in 2009 and started my corporate, um, ended my corporate career and then started my solo entrepreneurship career the same year. So I've been an entrepreneur, a small business owner for 11 years and I became a speaker, trainer and business coach. And now I train and teach women and a few good men all over the country about marketing and sales strategies for success. So I've been fortunate enough to be featured in publications like Who's Who in Black Atlanta, Forbes Coaches Council and Forbes.com. And I've also been an award-winning entrepreneur and give regular conferences and workshops to teach entrepreneurs sales and marketing mastery. So that qualifies me to speak to you today. And so I want to ask you, if you happen to have any light bulb moments and you learn something while we're on this uh, webinar, I want you to please share it on social media. Make sure you tag NCNW and tag NCNW sales webinar. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at I am Lori Mance. So what you're gonna to learn today are some important numbers and facts about sales and marketing. And then you're gonna learn my seven steps to increase sales in a digital world. And you're also gonna learn what a brilliant brand is and why it matters and why you don't just want a basic brand. Then you're gonna learn how to identify and define your target market, how to craft a compelling elevator pitch, and how to overcome the biggest branding mistakes and five ways to make your brand stand out in the marketplace so you can get more sales. So let's talk about the statistics and the facts, guys, because that's what it's all about. 92% of all customer interactions occur over the phone. 80% of sales require five follow-up calls after the meeting. And 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. 78% of salespeople or entrepreneurs using social media outsell their peers, or another way to say that would be outsell their competition. And email is almost 40 times better at acquiring new customers than Facebook and Twitter. Why? Because email is more personal. And Last but not least, salespeople and or entrepreneurs who actively seek out and exploit referrals four to five times more than those who don't win more. So guys, this is basically telling you that you need to be practicing digital marketing strategies and you need to pick up the phone and follow up. Now, the question I have for you is, how do you increase sales in a digital world and make your brand stand out? Well, if you don't know how to answer this question, stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you. So here are my seven steps to increase sales in a digital world. Number one, you have to do your homework. That means do some research. You've gotta become knowledgeable and study industry trends when it comes to what your field is. You have to be knowledgeable and understand what are the trends? What's going on in your industry? And when people ask you questions about it, you have to be able to answer. Then it's important to follow the top influencers and key players in your industry. In every industry, there are people who have reached the cream of the crop and you need to know who they are in your industry. And then you have to understand the supply and demand for your niche. What is the market demanding right now? And what are people interested in when it comes to your niche or your area of expertise? What are they want, wanting to buy? What are they interested in? If you don't understand supply and demand for your industry or your niche, 
you're going to miss out on what you could possibly use as information to help you make more money. And then you have to be a perpetual student of the game, meaning you have to always do continual learning and make sure you stay up on information that's going to make you a resource for people who follow you. If you share valuable information, you will be seen as an authority and an expert in your industry, which is priceless. Step two is determine who your ideal client is and your target audience is. So I want you to think about demographics, of course, which is age and gender, and then geographics, which is location, where are they located in the country or in the world, and then psychographics, meaning what are their values? What are their buying habits? What are these people interested in? And when you learn what people value, meaning what's important to them, you can then go about creating something worthy of them to buy. And then next you wanna learn in this digital world about their social media habits. So you need to ask them what platforms they frequent and find out where they spend the most of their time. Chances are Facebook is in the top three of where they spend time online. Now, number three is once you learn who your target audience and your ideal clients are, you have to connect with them. You have to show up. And when you show up, you can't just show up to say hi and see what they're doing. You've got to show up and provide value. So that means you show up online, you share content, you provide value, which means you educate, inform, and empower, okay? And you use social media to connect with them all over the world. And I will tell you, when people ask me about content and they're trying to figure out what they will share in terms of content, when you create original content, I'm gonna give you this sidebar, always think about what is it that people ask you when you tell them you are a website designer or you tell them you are a graphic designer or you tell them you are a life coach or you tell them you are a speaker or an author. What are some of the questions that they ask you? And those are the questions that you can answer when you share content, because it's always the things that people are curious about that they don't mind reading about if you're sharing that information online, especially on social media. Now, step number four is to build awareness. You may have heard of the ADA model, and it talks about starting with a funnel of attention. You have to grab people's attention when you're online, particularly on social media or on your website. So I'll give you a tip here. Grabbing attention on your website means that you need to have a free offer. What does that free offer need to be? It needs to be something that's going to compel people to give up their email so you can stay in touch with them. Now, how do you grab attention on social media? You do that with a very nice infographic, a very colorful picture, or a very compelling video. So the next step is to gain interest. And so when you gain interest, that means you're, you're sharing information that someone else will find interesting. And the next thing is to inspire desire. You have to make people want it, just like when you go to TV and you see those commercials of the Popeye's chicken sandwich or the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, and they have it so pretty on that picture, it makes you want to go buy it right away. So that's what you have to do in your content as well, inspire desire. Put up very colorful pictures and very compelling words to sell people and to make them interested and want to see it and want to buy it. And then finally, the next A is action. What are you going to do to make sure that people want to take action on whatever it is that you're promoting? And that means you have to have a strong call to action, okay? It can't just be buy this, it has to be grab such and such while supplies still last or get this free blank with this blank. It has to be an action that really compels people to move. So step five is you have to perfect your elevator pitch. 
And one of the things that really grates my nerves is when people say an elevator pitch, and I don't care when you see it or hear it, it's always something different. Your elevator pitch needs to be consistent. You need to say the same thing all the time so that people will remember it and understand what it is that you do so that number one, they can refer people to you. And number two, they can understand the value that you bring to the table. So I developed this simple formula for an elevator pitch. And mind you, an elevator pitch, when you add a call to action, is a sales pitch. All right. So let's go into the formula that I have for you in regards to your elevator pitch. It goes like this. Oh, my name is blank with blank. And you're going to insert your URL where we blank. And then you're going to insert your tagline. And then you're going to say, we help blank, and you're going to insert your target market who struggles with blank. You're going to insert your pain point to blank. So I'm going to give you an example using what I do. Hi, my name is Lori Manns with QualityMediaConsultants.com, where we help entrepreneurs and small business owners to grow their business and increase sales. We help entrepreneurs who struggle with inconsistent revenue to get more clients, gain brand, but gain brand visibility, and grow revenue in record time. So I say that pitch all the time the same way. And it lets you know what it is that I do and how I help. Because what I mentioned was we help entrepreneurs and small business owners who struggle with inconsistent revenue to get more dream clients, gain brand visibility, and grow revenue in record time. Can you see how I'm offering a solution for a problem or a pain point that my target market struggles with? That's exactly what I want you to do as well. So remember this formula and make sure when you practice your elevator pitch, you are consistent and you say the same thing every single time. And think about it this way, guys. Do you ever see major brands change their elevator pitch uh, from, one next, from one month to the next? No, you might see them change it, but it's a couple of years span. You know what I mean? They'll change their message, but it's a couple of years span. They stick with the same message for a long period of time before they change it. Why? Because they are very aware that people need to hear it over and over again before it sticks. So I want you to remember that. Now, going along in the seven steps to increase sales in the digital world, number six is improve your SEO. Now, search engine optimization is a digital term because it involves how you rank on the internet. And since Google is the number one search engine, you want to make sure that you rank there first. Okay, so how do you rank in Google? You use keywords on your website to rank high for whatever people are going to be searching for when they go to the internet. So if you're a life coach, perhaps they're searching for best life coach in Washington, DC. If you live in Atlanta where I am, perhaps they're searching for best life coach in Atlanta. Or if they want a woman, they're probably gonna search for woman life coach in Atlanta. So you want to make sure that you rank high for the word best life coach in blank city. Okay. So you can rank with those keywords by making sure you have them on your website, optimize on each page and utilize meta tags and meta tags are in the back end function of your website. Now, Another thing that you can do is create brand links for your website. Now, brand links are what you do when you get famous people or influencers in your industry to mention your website on their website, okay? And so if they put a URL up of your website on their website, that's called a brand link. And that essentially sends people from their website to yours. That's another way that you can rank on SEO and on Google. And the next thing you wanna make sure you always do is audit your website because if you have any broken links, 
That means if people go and they click on something and the link and the link comes up as an error message, that means it's a broken link. And when Google crawls your site to see how many links that you have operative, they're going to see all of those broken links and that will diminish your ranking on Google. Okay. So make sure you're auditing your website and make sure that if you have links anywhere that it leads to a page, okay? Whether it's a sales page or another page on your website, make sure that all your links are working. And next you want to create shareable content on your website. What does that mean? You need to have a blog, okay? Now, if you do not have a blog, you can also have a page, a stagnant page, where you just share your partner's information, your um, contractors, or any uh, joint venture people that you work with, you can have some recommendations on one stagnant page on your website. And you can also share some tools and resources on your website for anybody that comes there if you do not have a blog. But if you have a blog, make sure your content on your blog has social media icons so that people can share it. That is how you improve your SEO in a few simple steps. And so number seven is to use video to promote your brand and give offers. Why? Guys, you ought to know by now that video is the bomb.com, <laughs> okay? Video is easy to digest and it's also easy to remember. Most people would prefer to uh, watch a video as opposed to reading a post. And video speeds up the know, like, and trust factor. So when you're doing videos, people can watch a video and be instantly engaged if it is a compelling video. The other thing video has going for it is that it can go viral. And once a video goes viral, even if it never gets to a million or 10 million views, let's just say you got 100,000 views, that would instantly speed up your visibility, your income, and national opportunities. And how can you get started? YouTube. People are on YouTube, billions of people every single day download YouTube videos. And I will tell you from personal experience, I started my YouTube channel probably uh, 10 years ago, and I have about a handful of videos on there that have garnered over 5,000 views. My most popular video was over 14 or 15,000 views, and that one was about sponsorship selling. So yes, even when you're a no name and a nobody, you know, and you're not famous like an Oprah or a Beyonce, you still can get views from your video. So those are the seven steps to increase sales in a digital world. So guys, right now I want to share with you one of my clients who uh, was very apprehensive about doing video and was very apprehensive about social media and I gave her some tips and strategies for how she could grow her brand online. And what she has to say was before working with Lori, I was unsure about the strategies I needed to attract my ideal clients and generate more money in my business. And after the Trailblazer CEO Masterclass, I have clarity, confidence, and a new strategy for acquiring dream clients. I've already received new leads and new contracts as a result of implementing a few of the strategies Lori teaches. Now this was a client, her name was Patrice, and she had a, and still has, a evaluation company for nonprofits and small business companies. And she grew her business by over 200% that month while she was working with me. That is pretty awesome. And one of the strategies I will tell you that she did try was video marketing. Now, you might be thinking, well, how do I, stand out in a marketplace that is so overcrowded and oversaturated. There's so many people that do what I do. How is it that I, little old me, can stand out in the marketplace? Well, if you are thinking that question, I want you to stick around because I have an answer for you. Now, how do you ensure your brand stands out? 
like a red dot in a sea of white dots. Here it is. I want to talk about branding for a minute, okay? Because when you stand out, you not only need to stand out as the entrepreneur or the small business owner, you also need to stand out as a brand and an entity all its own. Your brand needs to also be an entity all its own. So a brand is the name, the term, the design, the symbol, or another feature that identify one seller's product distinct from those of others. Now, what is brand strategy? Because it's very important to have a strategy when it comes to your brand, because you gotta get it out there, right? So your brand strategy is your approach to being found, seen, and heard by who? Your target audience. Now, when it comes to standing out, you cannot be basic. You gotta be brilliant, you gotta be bold, and you gotta be confident when you put your brand out there. So I think branding is important when it's brilliant. And so I came up with brilliant because I believe our brands should be brilliant like diamonds. We should stand out like a brilliant diamond brand. So a brilliant brand is any outstanding feature that makes your product or service bankable as well as uniquely different than your competitors. Now you won't find that definition in a dictionary or online because I made it up. But what I will tell you is that when you are a brilliant brand, you're going to be more profitable than an ordinary or a basic brand. And what does it mean to be brilliant in Lori's book? Well, to me, when you're brilliant, you get more attention, you get more acceptance, you get more opportunity, and you get paid, which means you get more sales. And of course, it also means that you stand out. Now, I want to ask you something. If you have not figured out how to stand out as your brand right now, and you're making some mistakes, and you're trying to figure out how to get it all together, what you need to do next, or where to go from here, you're probably making some common mistakes. And it's okay. It's not your fault. Because most entrepreneurs do not have a business plan or a brand strategy, or even understand how to monetize their brand, which means how to make sure their brand is making them money. It's okay, I've got good news, I'm here to help. So here's some mistakes I would love for you to pay attention to because I wanna make sure you avoid these mistakes at all costs, okay? First off, picking a bad name for your brand is a huge mistake. When you pick a name for your brand that people cannot tell what you do from the name is not a good thing. You got to make sure you pick a name that people can get a clue what it is you do just from saying what your business name is or the name of your brand is. So a name that does not connect with who you are or what you're doing is not a good brand name for your business. And another mistake is making your brand too broad. A lot of people go into branding and marketing thinking, oh, I just want to get 10% uh, of the people who buy blank. No, you don't, because not everybody wants to buy what you're selling, and not even 10% of your industry is going to be interested. Most likely, it'll be more like 1% or 2%. So make sure you understand that you, go, you don't go too broad and you get to where you're niching it down to a specific group of people with a specific problem that you can offer a solution for. So another thing that people make the mistake of doing when it's branding time is not protecting the brand, meaning they don't trademark it or copyright it. And if you want to protect your work, you need to copyright and trademark your brand, okay? And another thing that people usually do when they're starting out or when they're a new brand is they underestimate the competition. I don't care what industry you're in, you have competition and there's always gonna be somebody trying to edge you out. So never underestimate your competition and always 
keep your eyes on what you're doing, but just be aware of what the folks are doing down the street. Now, another mistake is using buzzwords to define your brand. You know, you know the buzzwords that come out every year, something new, you know, well, if you're a relationship coach, you're saying, I'm a Bay relationship coach. No, you're not. You don't want to say I work with Bays, you know, because that's not going to be cool in a couple of years. There's going to be another buzzwords out, out there. You know what I mean? So don't use buzzwords to define your brand. Instead, use words of value that will stick around and will take some intrinsic component to really make people understand what you do from what it is that you say. Now, another mistake is when you have an out-of-date website or a blog, and I've talked to you guys about the website before because it's so important to update your website, meaning go in there and put in new stuff, refresh it, put in new pictures, put in new content on your blog, update some of your old posts or update some pictures or update something. Just go in there and update your website or your blog from time to time. And the other thing is, don't make this mistake of having an inauthentic brand. So if you have an authentic brand and you're not copycatting off of someone else, then your brand is authentic. But when you basically say, oh, I like so-and-so's brand, I'm going to do something similar. I'm just going to twist it up a little bit. No, you're going to look like a copycat. So make sure your brand is authentic. Now, guys, if you've made any of those mistakes, it's okay. It's not too late to fix it, all right? So let's talk about going from a basic brand to a brilliant brand, because this is going to help you make money online and make your brand stand out. And that's what we're talking about here. So how do you stand out again? I will submit to you this. When you go from being a basic brand to a brilliant brand, you are going to grow your brand authority. What does that mean? You're going to be seen as an expert. You're going to be seen as that go-to person. And you will eventually be seen as an influencer yourself in your business and in your industry. And then, excuse me, the other thing that happens is you start to magnetize your audience. People are drawn to you just by virtue of the fact that you are standing out. And the best part about being brilliant at what you do is when you make more money, you become bankable because when you stand out, you actually get that influence and you get more opportunities coming your way. Now, I want to share with you my framework to make your brand stand out so you can get noticed online and make more money. So let's get into it. Step one is tell your story. Using your story means that you're going to paint a picture in the minds of your ideal clients so they can visualize you and your message. Because guys, especially when you are the brand, people are interested in your story. They're interested in you. They want to know what your background is. They want to know what your experience is. They want to know why you're doing this work. They want you to do what? Humanize your brand. And when you tell your story, you are creatively humanizing your brand. So here's my question to you. What can you do, say, or offer to make your target market, meaning your ideal clients, feel like you really understand them? So I want you to think about how you can weave in what you do and your story to where your target market says, I really get her. I understand her a little better now, or I understand him a little better now, because you find a way to weave in whatever their issue is or whatever their challenge is. Somehow you make it relatable in your story so that they can say, yeah, I need to work with that person or I need to learn more about what they do because you find a way to connect. Now, that's number one. Learn how to tell your story and make it compelling. Now, number two is you gotta identify a problem because people pay money and they pay good money for solutions to problems. Do you know anybody that's willing to pay a lot of money for a little bitty problem? No, they pay for solutions to problems that are big problems 
and problems that they find a solution for that hits the nail on the head. So what are their specific problems or biggest challenges that you can fix or re resolve? When you think about your ideal clients and you think about some of the challenges that they have, you've got to define those challenges and come up with a way to present your solution as the answer. And when it comes to presenting your solution, you got to make sure that it hits the nail on the head because think about it, your competitors are also positioning their solution just like you are. So what's going to make someone choose you? Make sure you identify a specific problem with a specific solution that you are ready to say, this is the answer to your problem or your pain point, and you'd be crazy not to buy it, okay? Now, step three is you got to learn how to speak your ideal client's language. And I want to submit to you that it's not as easy as it may seem to really talk in a compelling, interest, interesting, and intriguing manner. Because if you're not talking in a way that's going to communicate that you really understand what they're going through and that you really understand their problem, they're not going to be compelled to buy. They're not going to click that buy now button. They're not going to click that follow button. They're not going to click on that button to try to take things a step further. So I want to ask you, what would your ideal clients do anything or pay anything to have or achieve? Those people that you want to sell to, what would they do anything or pay anything for to have or achieve? And then what can you offer them that they would literally jump at the chance to obtain? So I've got an example here. And here's the example. It's a lady. She's looking for a job. Her name is Sally. And Sally has a problem. Sally's problem is that she's educated and she has a job. But she has hit the uh, what they call the proverbial glass ceiling at her job. She's trying to get promoted, but it's not working. So she says, oh my God, I've hit a glass ceiling and I want a promotion. Where do I start? What do I do? I need to get some expert advice. So if you're working in corporate America or you're just working for a regular company and you feel like, I don't know how to get promoted. I don't know how to get promoted because I want to make more money. The problem is I've hit this glass ceiling. I want to make more money. I need to make more money. What do I do? So let's just say Mary is a career coach and Mary helps people like Sally, but if Mary is not putting the, mess the messages out there that will make Sally respond, then Mary's gonna miss that business because Sally's not gonna hire Mary, she's gonna hire somebody else. So if you were a career coach, if uh, your name was Mary and you were a career coach, you would say, okay, um, professionally written resume, leadership training, and interview consulting. That's what I do. That sounds very boring. That's not going to really compel anybody to want to call you or reach out to you. But if you were to get very specific and very, very niche down, you could say something like this if you were co career coach Mary. You could say, Try the leadership success formula, a five-step system to get recognized and promoted at work and break the and break the glass ceiling. I got tongue tied a little bit there, but you get where I'm going with this. If, if Mary had on her website a free downloadable report that says, learn how to attract your dream job by trying the leadership success formula, a five-step system to get recognized and promoted at work and break the glass ceiling. If she was showing up online on Google as the best career coach in her city, and Sally went to search for career coaches in that city, and she went to Mary's website and found that free downloadable report or a video where Mary was talking about this, then she would be like, oh, wow, that hits the nail on the head. She's doing exactly what I need. 
That right there, my friend, is speaking the language of your ideal client. That means you're telling them exactly what they want to hear because you're hitting the nail on the head. They got a problem and you got a solution. And if you're not communicating your solution in their, in your marketing, when they land on your website, you're missing the boat. All right. So I hope you guys get that example. Now we're going to move right on. Step four is you have to position your solution. Okay. You got to ask yourself some really important questions when you get ready to position your solution as the answer to your ideal client's pain point. Okay. And these are the questions that I want you to ask yourself first. What does the market want? Why do I want to serve this market? How can I help them? In what ways do I relate to them? And is my target market actively seeking a solution for a problem that I can solve for them? So here's another example that I wanna share with you, all right? Let's just say you're a health coach, right? And your name is Betty. So you're Betty the health coach and you're trying to market yourself and your brand in the marketplace. And you say something that really is just basic. Like, hi, my name is Betty and I'm a health coach. Click here to like my page. Ain't nobody gonna click to like your page <laughs> because that's not specific enough and it's not compelling. And the other thing is, it's too broad. Betty is gonna attract everyone. She's gonna attract good people and bad people. Her leads are gonna be all over the place if she any if she gets any leads. So what about if Betty said something like this? What about if she said, I'm a health coach specializing in raw foods, holistic health, and weight loss. What does that do for Betty? It makes it more specific about what it is that she does. And it also resonates with other people who love raw food, who practice and appreciate holistic health and want to lose weight. Do you see the difference? Because Betty has gotten more specific and she has learned how to attract her ideal clients who are ready for a solution by being specific when it comes to addressing pain points. Now, step five is you must inspire desire with a call to action, folks. And I mentioned this before, inspiring desire is very, very important. The first thing you gotta do is grab attention. And then you gotta mention that pain point because if you don't make people feel the pain, they're not gonna pay the dollar bills, y'all, okay? So you gotta make sure you um, offer the solution and then give examples of what you want them to do. So I put some examples at the bottom of this slide from two companies that I thought did a really good job of inspiring desire. And Stitch Fix is one, and their call to action says, your partner in personal style, let a Stitch Fix stylist find what you're looking for, no matter your style, size, or budget. Try on everything at home and only pay for what you like. Then they have an arrow for men or women. That message resonates with me because guess what? They're telling me I could try it on, I can do it virtually, and it's gonna be whatever I want, no matter what amount of money I wanna spend. That makes me wanna click the button. Now, here's another one. Unlimited movies, TV shows, and more. Watch anywhere, cancel anytime. Watch free for 30 days. Can you imagine what that is? That's Netflix, everybody. They didn't even need to put their name because it's on the top of the page. But what they're offering is number one, unlimited. And you know as well as I do, when you offer anything unlimited, people are going to want to click that. And then, especially if you say something is free for 30 days, that's a huge way to inspire desire. So that's what I mean when I say grab attention, mention a pain point, offer a solution, and give examples. Now, I wanna to talk to you about another one of my clients really quickly. Her name is Hana, and she says, before our strategy session together, I was in the process of trying to define my brand and clarify exactly what I did with and for my clients. After just one session with you, I walked away with such clarity in myself and my message as to what I do, how I do it, and what I can provide for my clients. If anyone has any doubts about themselves, what they have to offer and needs clarity in their message, they need you, Lori, as their coach. That was such a great testimony. She went on to have a very thriving business and still does today. So 
Here's another one. Her name is Alicia. She says, after working with Lori, I got 10 new clients within 30 days just by implementing a few of the marketing strategies she teaches. And I experienced 150% growth in my income in one month. The clarity, confidence, and techniques I've learned from Lori have been tremendous blessing to me and my business. Her name is Alicia and, she, and that business is Styles by Lisa. Now you might be wondering why am I sharing these success stories with you today? Guys, because it's because I want you to understand that no matter where you are in your business and no matter where you are in your brand right now, it's not too late to get the help that you need, okay? So let me just wrap things up. What you learned today was some important numbers about the state of the world when it comes to the pandemic and how you need to have digital uh, presence in order to stand out. And I shared some sales stats and facts with you. I also shared my seven steps to increase sales in the digital world. And I shared what a brilliant brand is and why it matters and why you can't just suffice to have a basic brand. And I also shared how to identify and define your target market and how to craft a compelling elevator pitch and how to overcome the biggest branding mistakes that you might be facing. And then I wrapped it up with five ways to make your brand stand out in the marketplace so that you can make more sales. So I know for sure that because I've covered a lot of information today, you might still have some questions. So you might be wondering how to develop a business model. You might be wondering how to develop a brand strategy. You might be unsure about how to pull it all together and create your sales strategy. You might be thinking that you need coaching and expert guidance and probably even a little accountability. So here's my bonus offer for you today. So many people always say, can I just get 15 minutes with you and ask you some questions? So what I'm gonna offer you guys is for the first 10 people who text me, I'm gonna offer you a free pick my brain 30 minute session. Now guys, this is for the first 10 people who happen to text and all you gotta do is put free 30 NCNW at the top of your text with your name and your email. I will talk to you about your brand and give you some suggestions and some tips, and we can go from there. If you want this opportunity, which is absolutely free, remember I said, always make it compelling. And if you offer something complimentary, there's always gonna be someone that takes you up on it. So this is that special offer. Text me right now to 404-432-0444. This is for the first 10 people only. And as you can see, there we go. I like fast action takers. There we go. Text me right now and you will get your free 30 minute session where you get to pick my brain and I will answer your questions and give you some suggestions. 404-432-044, let me turn my ring off. So you guys are on the ball. I was so excited. First 10 people, I didn't even get a chance to turn it down. Okay, so what we're going to do is if you guys are rocking that out, when I get to 10 people, I'll cut it off and I might even go to 11 or 12 just to be nice. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to type in the chat box your questions if you have any right now. And uh, I'll just wait, Johannes, and, and let you. Um, answer any questions and if by any chance that there was a survey that went out please do the survey and let me know if you learned something or um if you have any questions i'm here yes the survey will be in your email once the webinar is done please reply to it and give us an idea of how we're doing what you thought of this particular session and how we can improve at this point i am waiting on some questions to come into our box okay please awesome Please make your questions direct uh, because I'm going to have to read them and the easier the better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am here to answer any questions that you guys have. And in the meantime, let me just put up this screen here. If you wanna connect with me online, please feel free to do so. I would love to um, connect with any of you. If you mention NCNW, I will um, definitely follow you back but uh, if you don't, I might not. <laughs> so just being real, um, connect with me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I'm all over the internet 
on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I am Lori Nance. My company is facebook.com quality media consultant group. And uh, connect with me, guys, and check me out. And I'm, I share content all the time, free information to help you grow your business. So if there are any questions, I'm ready. Okay, our first question is, how important is branding merchandise to reflect your specific brand name? Oh, I think that is a really good question. When it comes to branding merchandise, I really think it depends upon what industry you're in. So if you are, for example, um, a t-shirt maker, right? You make t-shirts and you sell t-shirts, then you really need to be wearing your t-shirts. Uh, if you are somebody who sells jewelry or you say, oh, you do hair or, or you um, are a speaker or anything like that, you want to make sure you wear your brand. So I think it's very important to wear your branded material. So uh, if you're not somebody who has branded material to actually wear right now, what you can do is wear your brand colors, right? So branding colors are very important. And when you're picking your branding colors, you want to make sure that the colors resonate with the message of your brand because brand colors have meaning. So for example, my brand colors are gold and blue, and that indicates trust and quality and confidence and values. And so I even put quality in the name of my business because I believe in providing quality. And I also believe in trust. And in my opinion, trust makes business so much easier. So I definitely believe that brand uh, apparel is important, especially when you're going out. And if you're a speaker, then if it, at the least have a little brand lapel pin on. But if if it's a dressy event, then you want to make sure you have on a suit. And if it's a you know casual event, you want to make sure you have on a T-shirt or even like a a button down with your little logo on the shirt. So I think it's very important. And even if you're not wearing your brand, if you happen to be a vendor someplace and you have branded material like on your table, right? You have like a tablecloth that's branded or you have, you know, a, like when I go to exhibit at a trade show or something like that, everything is branded. So from my tablecloth to my pop-ups to my card, everything looks the same. It's the same colors. Everything is branded. So I really think that's very important. Great question. Oh, that was very good. So here's a question. What's your take on paid clicks and sales funnels? Okay, so I'm not a big uh, fan of pay-per-click, okay? Um, you got to have a lot of money when you go on Google and do pay-per-click. I've done it for some of my clients. I did it for myself. I did it one time for myself and never did it again. Um, I've done it for some of my clients. I, I'm just not a huge fan of pay-per-click unless you have a really large budget. And I do mean really large, okay? Because you're paying X number of, of dollars or cents based upon um, who's clicking. And so keep in mind, everybody that clicks ain't buying. OK, so you got to make sure that you've got enough money to last if you're going to do a pay for click campaign. I would much rather you do a sales funnel and that sales funnel is going to be a lot more effective because if you've got a lead page, OK, and your lead page is directing people to your website. OK, that means that lead page is sending people to that website and they got to put in their email so they can give up that email and you can communicate with them. Once you get their email, you can email them until they opt out. But if you're giving them value, they're not gonna opt out, chances are. So I would much rather see you do a leads page and then create that funnel where you are selling and you're trickling you know, information, content, and value to them and then upsell them. You know what I'm saying? So you have the opportunity to email them, uh, start with a low offer, a middle offer, and a higher offer. Sales funnel is always better. Great question. Okay. How do you determine the appropriate colors for your brand? And would you happen to know what red and pink represent? Um, I want to say, so red is bold, right? Red is bold and dynamic because Coca-Cola has red, right? Uh, so red is really bold and dynamic, and uh, those are the words that I can remember about red. 
um, pink. I cannot remember what they said. But it's very important to come up with um, brand colors based upon your brand promise, your brand identity and image. And when you get your brand strategy together, based upon who you want to attract, right? So if you want to attract women, you want to use the kind of colors that women will respond to. You don't want to use, you know, dark colors necessarily when you're trying to reach women. So you want to use bright, bold colors. But if you're also trying to root you colors to uh, attract men, you want to make sure that it's some neutral in there. And so it, it really is a science tool because when I uh, brand my clients and I figure out what their brand is going to be and their brand strategy, I take them through what I call a, a needs assessment and analysis. And so I look at what we're going to be saying to the target market who it is that we're trying to reach, how we're going to want them to re react and respond. And then I look at who is the brand, who is the, the company, who is the person, what are we selling, how are we selling it, and what messages are we trying to get across. And so all of that goes into picking the brand colors. Because you can't just pick a color out your wuha. It really has to make sense, or at least it's supposed to make sense. You know, it's supposed to resonate because anybody who knows branding and marketing knows that the colors are supposed to mean something for your brand because you don't just pick a color you pick a color that you want to stick with that also has some intrinsic meaning behind it so yeah there is a little science to to picking your brand colors so if i hope you were one of the people who text me if you want to pick my brain further i hope you were one of the people that text me whoever asked it, asked that question because there's there's just more to it than that if I've already incorporated my business under a name, it's not indicative to the type of services I do. What would be my next steps to a better brand? Okay, Johannes, I I cannot I couldn't hear that. What happened? I can't hear you. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you now. But I didn't hear what your question was. If I've already incorporated my business under a name that's not indicative to the type of service I provide, what would be my next step towards better branding my company? Change the name. Yeah, rebrand and change the name. There's nothing wrong with rebranding. Like, you can rebrand at any time, okay? Um, I don't care what state you live in in the United States. Um, when you get an EIN number, it's $50. Secretary of State, fifty dollars. Um, here's the thing, though. You before you rebrand, there's some questions that you would need to ask yourself, okay? And you know, if you were a, a, a client of mine, I, I would take you through a process to determine if you really need to rebrand or just start something new. Um, so you got to ask yourself some really serious questions about, you know, how much have you invested in this brand? Have you really built it up? Is you know, is it brand um, what are your brand assets? What are your brand financials? You know, how, how bankable is your brand right now? If, if it's a startup and you haven't really done that much, then just start over, okay? But if you've really put time, effort, energy, and money into it and audience and you got a following and, you know, then, you know, I would take you through some different steps, you know, because you can rebrand certain segments of your brand and you don't have to start all over. You can just start a new entity, right? So, that, that question is a little complex. So it's going to depend upon where you are right now in the process and where you're trying to go. So I can't give you that answer right now because it really is going to depend on a lot of stuff. Okay, here's an easy question. Do you work with financial advisors? Yes, I sure do. I have a few <laughs> clients who are financial advisors right now. Where can I go to learn what the uh, branding colors mean? because I have no idea what black and yellow mean. You can email me. Info at qualitymediaconsultants.com. There we go. For brand protection, should I both copyright and trademark or either? And is a trademark more beneficial? Now, that's a tricky question because when you trademark, you want to trademark a piece of proprietary content, okay? 
And you don't really have to trademark the name of your business or the name of your brand unless it is like, let's just take Oprah Winfrey, right? She had to trademark her name. She had to trademark own. She had to trademark the old magazine. Why? Because she had to protect that from all the folks who could bite off of her. Okay. But we ain't Oprah. So what you want to do is... You know what I mean? So what you want to do is you might not need to trademark right now. What you might want to do is copyright. Okay. You might want to copyright your name. And so as long in most states in the United States, 50 states, in most states, if you can prove that you've been using a name for X number of time, you have what's called a working copyright. Okay. You can prove that you've been using it. You can prove by emails. You can prove by your website. You can prove by having an EIN number. You can approve by having social media pages. You can prove that you have this company. And so even if you don't have a copyright, you if somebody tries to bite off of what you're doing and steal it, you may not win, but you can at least prove that you did it first, okay? And then you need to go ahead and get your copyright. So I am a firm believer that you need to get copyright before trademark because trademark is a lot more expensive, okay? And the process is not easy. But... If you have something like if you have a like if you created a pro, uh, product like um, let me just see like okay I have these I don't know if y'all can see this or not but this this is a container with uh, clamps in it so let's just say I created a holder for some clamps and I it did something fancy and my uh, company was called you know Boss Clamps or whatever so if I want to trademark that name and I don't want anybody else to use it then I pay for the trademark and I pay for the copywriting because see, you got to pay for different things because copywriting is proprietary content. That means if you come out with a book or a ebook or write paper or a training or an online course that you have to copyright, but the name, the logo, the branding, the look and feel and the aesthetic is what you need to trademark because people can steal that too. So you have to determine what's more important for you that you want to protect, right? So it depends upon what you're selling and depends upon what your service is. Is it a product or a service? So that that depends. But I hope okay. I get okay. some get clues. <laughs> Do you work with politicians? You know, I used to, but if, um, I can, I can. Um, it depends. It depends on what they need. So yes, reach out to me. There's my info on the screen. Reach out to me. And if I can't help you, I will direct you to someone who can. And if I can, we can explore that. So yeah, email me. And the only reason I, I um, hesitated was because um, some politicians, like if you don't align, if you don't vote in there, <laughs> if, you're, if you're not going to vote, they they're hesitant to work with you. But um, if you're open, then hey, I'm open. So email me and let's talk. Let's have a conversation. You are getting several laughs. <laughs> I'm just being real. Y'all know who's in the White House. I'm not, I'm not trying to give it away, but I'm just saying. Do we have any more questions? I believe. That may be all the questions. We're getting a lot of thank yous and great presentations. Oh, awesome. Thank you guys so much. It's always a, 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 a pleasure and a privilege. I need to drink some water so I'll stop getting tongue tied. Uh, Ms. Mathis, are you there? Ms. Mathis, uh -huh. does she have to log off? No, my I'm working with a new computer because okay. I'm at home and I have a new laptop and I'm still learning how to use it. No. I keep thinking it's a touch screen like the iPad, but it's not a touch screen. It's an old fashioned toggle mouse. But Lord, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not surprised because I've heard you several times before, and I know that you always bring the fire and everything that we need to get inspired and go out and do our, be our best selves. But when you talk about SEO and brilliant brands, not basic brands, brilliant brands, 
and a compelling elevator pitch, I know that our audience was getting what they bargained for. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I text you myself. Okay. So I hope I was one of the 10. Okay. If not, I got your phone number, if not. <laughs> I want to encourage everybody once again to please fill out the survey. You know, today was an interesting day. One of the things I had to do was fill out a report to our sponsor, the Coca-Cola Company, for bringing these webinars every month. And I was looking at social media, and you know they tell, give you all kinds of analytics now on your social media and your email. Lord, we have a 93% satisfaction rating among our webinar participants. Oh, that is so, awesome. I think it's awesome. I th I'm so grateful. It's not me. It's not Mr. Johannes, although it's, it's got a lot to do with Mr. Johannes. It's got a lot to do with Dr. Cole. But it's got a lot to do with the quality of speakers that we try to bring you every month. And we're able to do that without charging anything because of companies like Coca-Cola and UPS who help us put these programs on. But there is so much more that we can do. And I will tell you that if you join NCNW for a mere $50 for an annual membership, you will more than get your money's worth. September 24th through the 27th is our 59th national convention. So far, more than 900 people have signed up to attend. We're very grateful for that. But there's still a few days left and we encourage you. I'm sorry, that's my dog. I can't shut him up. His name is Barack. He's 13 years old. I'll let you figure out when and how I got him. But I want you to think about joining NCNW and help us get stronger and bigger and better. Thank you all, Mr. Johannes. Thank you, Lori, again for a wonderful presentation. And You're good welcome. night. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good night.